Hey guys, Fuzzy Knop here. This is uh, War Games for Learning, Part 3. Um, we're going through the Smash the Stack IO War Game server. Um, on the last one, I left off on level 1. Uh, this one, we're going to jump to level 3. Level 2 is really easy. Um, it's just Fibonacci sequence, so go ahead and Google that if you don't know what that is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect to level 3 here. And. I don't know, if you don't want to do the first two and you want to start with this video, I don't know, leave a comment, let me know, I'll email you the password if you really want it, but I'm not going to I'm not gonna post it. Um, so we're on level 3, up here you can see we're level 3, and we're going to go to the levels folder, and as you can see we have a, a level 3 compiled source code file and a level 3 uh, uh, C source code. So, we can take a look at level 3 by typing cat level 3. It's just to uh, display the contents of that. If you don't put the dot .c, you're going to get a bunch of gibberish because uh, you can't read the compiled form. So, in this program, uh, there's a couple of important things to note. This uh, hmm function here is what we want to execute. And this program does a number of things. It takes in a, a couple arguments and it uses those arguments to set the limit of how long the string it will take. And it's a uh, there's a buffer overflow vulnerability because if you look right here, it's a, it's a 32 character buffer and here it's going to allow the length of the argument to set the length of uh, the string and the clear error is that it takes up to 40. Um, so we're going to be allowed to type up to 40 characters and put them into this 32 character buffer. So uh, it's kind of nice this program because um, what it does also down here is that it helps you by printing out the address of this hmm function so you don't even have to figure out where this uh, is in memory and you don't have to put in shell code to make this happen. It's already there for you. So you just have to kind of like twist the way the program works to make it do what you want to do. Um, it also uh, makes it really obvious where you need to put your code in because it takes the first 36 uh, characters in the buffer and replaces them with A. So it's pretty obvious that whatever you put in that the first 36 characters isn't, isn't going to matter. So, it's a brief explanation of this program, what it does. Uh, the best way to see it, though, is to just look at it. And that is what we'll do in GDB. So, type gdb dot slash level 3, and we'll pull up level 3. Now we can run it, and we can put an A in. And you'll see that its main function, uh, what it's going to do, is it's going to tell you where the... Uh, code that you want to execute is at located in memory. So this is the memory address that we actually want to execute right here. So to do this uh, effectively, I mean you could type it all out, but uh, I want to show you something that's going to help you. Now you have a couple options. Um, I'm going to use Perl for this example, but things like Python will also work. Um, and those are just scripting languages to help automate these things. So. Uh, I'll use Perl for this example. So we're going to run it, and to get inline execution of Perl commands, you have to surround it by dollar sign and a parenthesis. So even if uh, even if you type like just Perl and then start typing, it's not going to work. You have to do this. So dollar sign, and I'm, I'll make it bigger so that you can see the details. So we got dollar sign parenthesis. Inside, we're going to say Perl. That uh, indicates that we're going to use Perl in this next uh, command. Uh, we're going to use the execute tag, uh, dash E, and the thing that we want to be executed is going to go in single quote. So in the single quote, the command we want is print, and what we want to print is, we'll say A times 40, okay? Now we will end the single quote. I think we need to put a semicolon in there too. That may be wrong, but don't worry about it. It'll still work. Okay, so you see now, instead of um, instead of printing out the memory address, the program crashes, 
and it gives us a segmentation fault, meaning it was trying to execute some memory that it's not allowed to do. And it says, like, you know, hey, where is this address? It has no idea what's going on here. So the address it tried to execute was 41414141. And you can see um, that 41, right, is, is the letter A in ASCII. So we already know that by typing in A, 40 A's, that we got it to execute something that we typed in. Um, it's a pretty big hint that it replaces the first 36 characters with A that those first 36 characters are not useful. So it's probably the last four characters that are useful. So let's just confirm that. Let's put 36 A's. We know it's going to get replaced with A's anyways. And after that, um, we'll use a period to concatenate more stuff into this string. So it's a space, period, space. Let's go ahead and throw a B in there times 4. Okay, so we're still at 40 characters. First 36 are A's, first 4 are B's. We're just making sure that it's actually executing those last 4 uh, bytes. And what we get back is seg fault 42, 42, 42, 42. And what that is is our 4 B's that we put in there. Okay? So, uh, you can see how you can use Perl to automate a little bit of this. And this program gives you the, you know, the prize right here. So you need to take, uh, you need to think about this and how to take this and put it into the command here to get it to execute that. Now there's an important thing to note that I want to show you. Um, two things is here's here's how you sort of giving away the answer. Here's how you put hex code directly into uh, Perl. You use a backslash. And you use the letter X to denote hex, then you need two characters. Um, and for this, I'm going to just type 01 hex 02 hex 03 hex 04. Okay, so here's four hex bytes that I'm putting in. Now, there's something really important that's going to happen that you will need to uh, take note of if you want to get this working is that when it tries to execute, it didn't execute 01020304. Instead, it executed a memory address called 04030201. Hmm, pretty interesting, huh? So take ahead, uh, go ahead and take this information, kind of put it together, and you should be able to get this exploit work and to, to finish this level. So two big important points is how to use Perl to throw uh, automate some of your typing and how to recognize that a memory address might be a little different uh, I don't want to give it away so hey if you guys like this video go ahead and leave me a comment let me know what you thought uh, how I can make it better um, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more uh, it's fuzzy off signing off see ya